Hey everybody, Peter Mancuso here from a little show called Now That's What I Call a Franchise. Maybe you've heard of it. Before getting into this week's episode, um, I just wanted to talk about some stuff going on. Um, we record our episodes you know, months in advance, but as of the release of this episode, uh, both the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild uh, have gone on strike against basically all of mainstream Hollywood, uh, which is represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Basically, both unions are demanding their fair share of the profits that their hard work and uh, dedication produces for these, you know, multinational media conglomerates and uh, their overpaid CEOs. Now, when SAG went on strike, there were some questions around what counted as promotion, uh, something that could be considered crossing the picket line. Um, and there's been a lot of confusion and misinformation and mixed signals about this, uh, particularly for non-union members, um, even just covering older films released by these struck companies. And on our show, that's all we do, right? We've covered like three franchises owned by Disney, which I think speaks volumes about the state of the industry. Um, and now we're focusing on Batman, which of course is owned by Warner Brothers. So what do we do? Well, after sifting through all the information the best we could, we've decided to continue our release schedule as planned. Uh, we're not doing this out of laziness. Uh, if anything, delaying our schedule would actually give us more time that we desperately need uh, to watch these films and record our thoughts. But by releasing our episodes as planned, uh, we at least have the chance to insert this intro uh, and make it clear in no uncertain terms, Viviana and I and the New Arts Workshop stand with workers above and below the line, striking or not, unionized or not. And we're not going to remove this intro from our episodes until the studios satisfy the union's demands. If you want to help the cause, post about it on social media or donate to each union's respective strike funds. Alone, we can't do anything. Together, we can change everything. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox now. Time for the show. You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. Point. I'm not even sure what it's good for. I can't tell you how cool it is to be in an R&D company that takes young women seriously, especially blondes. Welcome back to your favorite podcast. Now that's what I call a franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is the show where Peter and I take a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's the first time you say that we take a fr franchise. The I script, know. The script says I pick a film. Peter and I pick a film franchise. I noticed that But this too. time we're taking it. I noticed that too. We also pick them. Mm -hmm. Mostly we pick. You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, and you can pick a franchise. And to be clear, when you're finding your friends... You can't pick your friends' no. And you can't pick your friend's franchise. But to be clear, <laughs> we're defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. So, Viviana, what are we talking about today? Okay, so today we are talking about the 2003 film Batman colon Mystery of the Batwoman. Ooh. Although it should be, spoiler alert, Mystery of the Batwomen, but I digress. Uh, again, Warner Brothers, Max, do it up. No, we, we just established in the last one not to say. I, that's, there's a good change. That's why I said just a reminder and a do it up. I oh didn't say God. for your information. I just said a do it up. You know, you if spoiled, it's different. You spoiled that it's bat women without saying your line about the spoiler warning. You, no, you I, give a spoiler before the spoiler warning. No, and I said spoiler warning. It should be bat women. Okay. None of your biz. You're really going off script. Get, it, it was an accident. And, <laughs> and get out of my business. <laughs> Anywho, watch it before listening so you know what the fuck we're talking about. Anywho, here's the letterbox blurb. As if the penguin wasn't enough to contend with, a new vigilante has surfaced in Gotham and her strong arm tactics give Batman cause for concern. I don't mean to keep criticizing you, but now we have, we, we actually, listeners, we bought a second microphone. What do you want? I was going to say, you don't need to scream because now you have your own microphone. 
and it picks up more than before. Because before, listeners, we used one, and I set it to, like, the two-way, like, it pointed in both directions. Yeah. And that's why Vivian always sounds so fucking quiet, because she doesn't project. <laughs> but now we have two microphones. So this one is set to just the one direction. It is just you. So the levels are good. You do not need to spray. Because uh, I got I got bass in my voice. I speak in my throat, whereas you project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'd be a great throat singer. Um, <laughs> like a monk. They were doing like the Gregorian chants. In the TV show Monk, yeah. 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 Are they meant monks who also do Gregorian <laughs> no, chants? In the show Monk about the 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 man who used to be a former police detective, homicide detective who who was released on psychological discharge when his wife was killed with a car bomb. Captain Stottlemyer, Stottlemyer, his friend, thought that he had a revelation and decided to become a monk. Okay, and in, in that, there was a vow of silence, but also these other monks, I guess they weren't vowed to silence, and so they were doing Gregorian chants, and it said so in the subtitles, so. Okay. Anyways, here's some basic information Whoa, about that. Whoa, that's, that's <laughs> mine! You are going off script! It's my job then to tell them the it, basic info. Do so, it. this was directed by Kurt Gita. So, this is like the third thing. He directed the Batman, a lot of Batman yes. Beyond stuff. He directed Return of the Joker. Good job, Kurt! Um, it was written by Michael Reeves, who I believe also wrote or co-wrote uh, *Mask of the Phantasm*, um, and also episodes John of the show. Reeves' brothers. I don't know who John Reeves is. The Superman man. You mean Christopher? Christopher Reeves or George Reeves? Both spelled differently. George Reeves. This has an A in it. Brother. <laughs> Anywho, so the producer. It would was be funnier brother. if you mentioned Matt Reeves, who directed a Batman film, the Robert Pattinson one. How was I? How would I know that? No, it feels like it would be a little more relevant because that's Batman. Who? You're referencing Superman. What am I supposed to know? Every freaking director of all Batman. We, we've already gone over. You every... can't keep any information in your head. But you've no, already made this I know the basic ones, and everyone else fills it in. I got the basic. It was produced by Margaret M. <laughs> Dean, a lady. There was a lot of ladies in the opening credits for, there was. for producers, casting directors. Other roles, I forget. Uh oh, the uh, what was it? The uh, voice. Uh, the, the acting the, the, producer, the, the voice like director, like the casting director, Andrea Romano, who she's she's done a lot of these already. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrea, Bruce's love. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it was distributed by. Well, fun fact: I didn't put this in. I believe in Return of the Joker. She voices the what Tim when he's like J- Joker Junior and like laughing. Andrea? The laugh is heard. Yeah, Andrea oh. Romano is does the voice of like the laugh. Scary. Um, it was distributed by Warner Home Video. This was a direct-to-video, or maybe at this point in time, a DVD, but direct-to-home <laughs> media. A direct-to-VHS. Uh, yeah, whatever it was. <laughs> and then it was released in October of 2003. So um, I had never seen this per a lot of these. I had never, uh, and I didn't really know it existed until doing research for the show. Yeah. I, w- I would say, I would ask... You have? You, did you know about it? But obviously you didn't. If I didn't know about it, you certainly didn't. <laughs> no. But um, what what were you saying? This was part of the show. Yeah, this is part of the same. This is part of that continuity. Right. With, okay. Okay. In the, the, the DCAU, the DC animated universe. Yeah. Or the, or the Tim verse, if you will. Oh, yeah. T I M M, and not the Burton verse. No, 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 no. Tim. Um. Uh. Why? But yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Well, I was just, I was just, um, I don't know. I was just trying to put everything together, I guess. And it, it's not a standalone thing. It was, it was in between one of the seasons or whatever. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's standalone in that. Again, if you like with a lot of these films, if you just have a general idea of like Batman and the. I just mean like his... it wasn't random. It was like there was there was same some... cast, same. Yeah, there was something to kind of market it before. Yeah, you know. Though so the show, though the Batman show was o- well over by this point. Oh, um, I thought you said they did a rebranding and started it up again. That was like a, that was still in the nineties. Oh, that that's all before Batman Beyond comes out or like concurrently. But by two thousand three, I think it's like almost exclusively just Justice League stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so this is kind of like returning to that well in in a way. Um, mm-hmm. 
But I think I did read that this is meant... Not that it really matters. This takes place after the end of the animated series, but before the Return of the Joker flashback sequence. <laughs> okay. Um, Which is... So, is Barbara at college, but then she comes back because she's Batgirl in that flashback. So... But it, it really does not yes. matter. It, it's, all you need to know so, is that it's Batman and he has Tim Drake as Robin. Wait, so um, she was only like like occasionally Batgirl? Like, I don't know. Part time, like like it, during winter break? <laughs> but referencing that rebranding of, of the new Batman adventures, um, it's in like that revised art style. Cause, so they did have a... It's not yes. major, but if you look at them side by side, you could see like a difference. Yeah. Just in terms of like the character designs are a little bit more like refined or like sleeker or mm-hmm. more uniform mm-hmm. whereas in the original animated series like sometimes it would have like not a lot of detail and then also but then like a lot of detail so yeah this is a little more uniform this one doesn't have like it, it's like the opposite like i feel like it doesn't have a lot of detail but like all at the same time it does like like especially with their eyes like they don't have pupils mm-hmm. i don't know why that was a thing but like i noticed that for like bruce and like Barbara and it's like you know so it's a, like very simplified in yeah. some aspects but then like very detailed in other aspects so yeah. um yeah the the art style is is that paradox is achieved <laughs> because they're not detailed a sense of like textures and like details of their clothes or their facial features but like yeah. they're very defined like it's very like broad yes. um again kind of pulling from that art deco art style which is what this universe had been drawing from yeah. where it's like very broad uh shapes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily like within those shapes there's not a lot of like, like complicated detail. yeah yeah it. so it is very exaggerated like you could probably draw bruce it. pretty easily like if you if you like yeah. are a semi-decent drawer mm-hmm. drawer you can probably do like it's not that complicated. Illustrator? Sure, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's pretty uh, geometric and yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, but it was interesting to see that new art style because again, where I'm at watching the animated series, I haven't gotten to like that rebranding. Mm-hmm. So like Alfred looks different now. Like he doesn't have like whites of his eyes. Like he does just have like black dots. Yeah. Gordon yeah. used to be like <laughs> jacked, and now he like looks like. He looks like Al Roker, like, when he had a ga- his gastric bypass. So now he's, like, he used to be much bigger, but now he has, like, a really thin, like, neck. Yeah. That's yeah. what Gordon looks like in this. And so it's just, like, it's 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 not better or worse, it's just, like, different. It yeah, was, just different. It caught me off guard. But, but this is the fourth and, I believe, final film of the DCAU mm-hmm. um, in terms of, like, an actual film. Right, because Batman okay. Beyond the movie doesn't count, because that was just the show, right? Okay. But this yeah. would be the fourth after, so Mask of the Phantasm, yeah, Mister Free, Sub Zero, and then Return of the Joker. Yeah. And I, so I believe this is the last one we're gonna watch. That's like officially a part of this continuity, though there are a few Ever? that they don't they don't do some later. I don't. I think there's like a few that. Their, their place in the continuity is debatable because uh. the art style is similar but not exact and the voice cast is like the same. Uh. But it's like, is this part of the same continuity? But again, at the same time, it really doesn't matter. This could exist well, in any... I guess if it's on the same timeline, like if it if those things match up mm-hmm. or like if you could match things up too. I think the point being the contents of the story, like there's not much to really place it. In, like, oh, okay. It's not super dependent on continuity, which is why we're going to watch it. Okay. Well, right. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is the fourth one, like I said, taking place somewhere between the end of the new Batman adventures and then the flashback sequence, uh, of Return <laughs> of the Joker. Um, but that's really the only background I have on it. Cause again, this is like very, like it, it's, it's a direct to video movie. I was very underwhelmed. It's very, it's very, <laughs> I, I, it was better than I thought it was going to be. No, it wasn't, I, I will it wasn't say. terrible. But but I think we have the opposite. Like I, it was better than I thought it was gonna be, and I could sense from you. Like again, you were under a little underwhelmed. Like it was worse. Yeah. Maybe worse. Well, and you would think it would like appeal to me more because of like the, as a woman, as a woman aspect. But like I think, jeez Louise, it's a woman, which is an actual line <laughs> said so by silly. like a, a goon at the beginning when Batwoman is stealing uh, like something, like some tech, some yeah. tech, and the guy goes, also, they think it's Batman. Jeez Louise. Like, Louise, it's a woman. <laughs> Also, we never figure out, we're never told who it was on that night. 
which I wanted to know, which I wanted to know because like there was this whole thing about like them not regarding human life and like Bruce being all pissed and stuff. So like, it's like they're they're taking my my trademarked character, yeah, and, and doing and and like causing harm, yeah, causing harm, whatever. So so if you haven't watched the movie and you don't care to watch it, the main mystery is this this. Batwoman appears in Gotham and no one knows who it is and obviously it's not it's not Batman obviously but he doesn't know who it is and they're trying to figure out who it is but she's and not the like movie, saving people she's like trying to like, get like steal like tech or destroy tech stuff, stuff like yeah, yeah. Of, of bad dudes but she's not like fighting crime so to yeah, speak yeah, right? yeah. she has a very particular goal yeah um, and they they do this they they do this good I will say I will give the, it credit that it, it kind of pulls the rug out from under us. So they introduce three new characters yeah. who are all kind of have the same build. They're all kind of shorter, <laughs> skinny, cartoonish boobs. Big boobs. Um, similar head hips. shape. Right, the hips, right? The, the, the hourglass is, is very um, defined. And the mystery is like, oh, like one of them's probably Batwoman. And then like, you start kind of doing like your deductive reasoning. Like, like okay, it's this one. Because, and because then, you're like, oh, well they're both in the same room at the same time. So like, it can't be her. Yeah. So it must so be. It- <laughs> but then it turns out the twist is that all three it's of them are Batwoman. Me. And they take three. turns doing it because they all, because there's like basically a trio of villains. You have the peng- iconic penguin. Yes. Then, Oswald. And then another dude, dude named Thorn. And then another dude named Duquesne. And each of the I women. I thought he was gonna be like, uh, sorry. I thought he was gonna be like a dude because he like a dude. No, he's a man. He's a man. No, he's a dude's dude. No, I mean because like he was playing with the cards, so I thought he might like be like uh, an actual like like a like a penguin level type dude, not just like a random person. But... He, he may very well be from the comics, but he's not like an iconic villain. By no, yeah. At least from my. Well, opinion. I just thought the the introducing of the of the you know. Because it's kind of like like Two-Face with the coin. It's like, you know, Joker with the cards. I don't know. He was, like, playing with like those deck of cards. Yeah. And it was like, Multiple every cards. Batman villain needs, like, some weird physical tick. Yeah, like... A, in like, order for him to be a Batman villain. In multiple scenes with, with uh, uh, quite a few close-ups. So I, I figured it would be important, but alas. But alas, twas no. not. Um, so each of the three women each have, like, a bone to pick with the that crime trio so you have you have rocky or roxanne she's like a scientist at wayne tech mm-hmm. and she wants to get back at the penguin because oh no thorn thorn for no no it's penguin it's penguin because basically her husband was framed something with something oh. having to do with penguin yes 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 like some arm and then there's and then there's Ka- kathleen or Catherine duquesne uh, the character, the, the woman of color who they make look like she just has jaundice. Like, she just looks like gray <laughs> or yellow. She gray. Like. Um, no, I think it's Catherine. Or, Ka- yeah. Let's let's look Ka- it up. This, this this doesn't bode well for this movie that I we feel, can't remember. No, right. I feel like they said both. Kathleen. Kathleen. It's okay. Kathleen but they would or also, Kathy. They would also say Kathy or, like, different things. Um, she's um, the daughter of, of Duquesne, and she resents him because their, her mother was killed because of being married to the crime lord, right? Yeah, because he's like a big gangster, and I guess there was a hit out on him, yeah. but they hit the wrong person and mm-hmm. hit the mom instead, so, um, yeah. yeah. And then there is yes. Sonia, who's like a new police officer. Um, a foxy mama with a, mole power. A foxy mama with mole power, exactly. <laughs> um, and she wants to get back at Thorn because I forget why, but essentially, like their house oh, catches her, on fire. No, no, no. Their their store catches on fire. I guess. I guess. I think they, they, the, he was like a mob thing, and they they basically firebombed the store, but they lived above the store. I guess the and it I, led to their financial I guess ruin. The, the implication kind of seemed like her parents were like immigrants, and so they like had their Sonia Alcana. Yeah, they had like their own store. They they basically had nothing, right? They had this store. Somehow it caught on fire, and she was asleep when it happened. And so Batman saved her. That's why she became. That's why she became a cop. But I guess somehow, um, it was Thorn's doing or or second handed something. I don't know. I I kind of forgot. But anyway, so she blames him for that because now they're like basically like dirt poor and like. Everything they had worked for, like, didn't, you know, pan out yeah. well. Even though 
wouldn't they get insurance money? Maybe they didn't have insurance. I don't know. Maybe that's not part of it. Maybe they needed more than the insurance money. How does insurance work? They get fucked over. That's they the point. They get fucked over. That's the point. So it it's they all have like their reason, and and again, it's it's. We started to kind of predict it, so I'm not saying it was like a huge shock, but it's. I do think it. I I, I think it, it works on a narrative level. Like it's an interesting kind of twist of twist of fate. And, uh, yeah. Well, because I called it, I was like, oh, it's it's Kathy, but then they psyched me out, and then they, I was like, wait, so it's Rocky, and then they were like, wait, maybe it's the other lady. It was all three. But it's all three. <laughs> um, three sexy mamas. So, um. <laughs> Uh, let me see what I have here. Like, there's not too much to... I actually have quite a bit of notes, but I feel like they're kind of, like... Like, like one of my notes is, the women in this are hot. <laughs> like, they really make them hot. <laughs> this, I'm sorry, but... They do make them all very good looking. And, and, um... Kathy, she's got, like, that cute, like, kind of short pixie cut Halle Berry type look thing going on. Mm. Early, early 2000s, of course. And the way she moves. Her, her walk. <laughs> She, you know, you know what? You can tell how how exaggerated it is by the fact that when we first get introduced to Kathy and she says hi and she's like hi, daddy, blah blah blah. Peter thought that sh she meant like like her daddy. I, I, thought, like, I thought that was like Duquesne's no. like girlfriend, not no, his daughter. That's her father. <laughs> the way she said it was very uh, well. The way she sensual. she walked, she's like you know. She is she a, is she a teenager? I, I guess I hope not, because Bruce is a full grown man, and they ended up having a romantic relationship. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, maybe she's older. Which, which I I didn't I didn't know anybody looking like that in high school. So let me tell you. <laughs> do you, but speaking of like that romantic relationship, right? So do do Bruce and Kathy really have anything between them besides like they're just both hot? Like is that the only <laughs> thing? Like, well, I guess they both feel trapped. They both, they both feel. It's like Batman has zero arc in this. He has, <laughs> he. This is this is the good old bat days of Batman movies where it's all about the villains or the antiheroes, and Batman is just there to stop it. See, there's no, there's not really anything care interesting on a character level going on. With yeah, him. he's like um, clearly in it. Um... Especially compared to the lot to Return but, of the Joker, where it's like you get two uh, Batman yeah, yeah, both yeah. going through an arc. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. But I will say, say this but... feels like uh, I said about Mister Freeze Sub Zero. Mm -hmm. Really, it's called Batman and Mister Freeze, but I don't need to say that. Part. I just did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that movie felt just like a really long episode of the show. I think this one does transcend it a little. Bit. I think because. Because it's a new, it's sure, new yeah. characters. It's like its own. Whereas, whereas, Mister Free Sub Zero very much felt like a continuation of like the storyline set up in the uh, the series, like in yeah. those episodes. This this well, feels like was. its own. It, was. it feels like a very inconsequential story, but it feels like a story. <laughs> like it feels like there's like a complete standalone beginning, middle, and end to this. Story. Yeah, I think there's enough like new locations and and characters to kind of say like you know mm -hmm. this is its own type of thing yeah um but yeah um, what did you think i thought you were like, underwhelmed so I tell me it was so, okay what, what um, were you hoping it was gonna be or like like what 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 fell short specifically well honestly i I honestly don't know exactly, but, like, what I was trying to, like, one of the things that I thought of might be, like, just the passage of time, because now, I mean, we have, like, you know, like, Barbie just recently came out last month, right? So it's, like, there's... For us. Yes, for us. So there's there's been, like, a whole, you know... 20 years of of kind of like evolving feminism and and more like you know uh this is 20 roles years old exactly. and whatnot yeah. yeah so um i don't know it just seemed like a typical story but the big zinger was that they were all three of them mm. i was not expecting that um which i like because not just like oh it's narratively like takes a turn but yeah. also like 
I think it does kind of speak like if you want to like make like a feminist read on this movie, mm-hmm. which I think you you could do if you were really like if you were starved for media to review. Starved and, for media? No, but I'm saying like this is not meant to be. Lens. What's that? Of course you could do a feminist lens. What are you talking about? But I'm saying the movie is not very deep. It's not very deep. No, yeah. So that's I, why. That's I, what I'm saying. I think like, that's this. that's what but I'm kind of getting if, at. If too. you want to do that kind of read, <laughs> I think there is something there in that. Like it's not just because like there's a woman, mm-hmm. um, like t- ha- who has agency. Mm-hmm. There are multiple women. Yeah. A, but B, or I guess maybe A one. <laughs> Is is they're not just they don't it's not just three women who have agency it's three women working together yeah which I think is really important right and and yeah. like well and it's not it's not just like them you know having agency or whatever it's like they're also like all like bad mamma jammas like you know freaking Kathy is like a superhuman like she's done every single sport known to man like oh that's right you know yeah. she's like a champion like track and like all this other stuff and, and rocky's then, super smart like yeah, she, i Ro- think she creates the suit i think or like i guess so or, or like when well, she created that like that yeah. metal or the, but her suit's out, like the batman beyond or... one where it's like i don't know how that could exist in real life because her face is the, the whole, mask yeah <laughs> that's how you know they mean? Do, like her mouth they... is moving but you don't see like a like a a hole for the mouth it's just like her mouth is on the suit yeah <laughs> you know that's I mean? yeah that's how they get away with it because i was um because I was just watching, right? And then I was li- trying to figure out who it was later on. And I was trying to think back, like, oh, like, what color was her hair? But it's it's all in the mask. So, you know, they couldn't. There was, there was nothing. Yeah. yeah, they totally faked us out. And also something sneaky that they did was that <laughs> each lady was its own person. Was had, own voice was, has, has her own voice actor. But when they were all bat women, there was a fourth voice. There actress. was a fourth person, which really so threw us all off. Yeah. The voices, like the voice, the whole time was the same. Because trust me, I was trying to, I was trying to go back and forth and like listen and try to like see. Oh well, she kind of sounds like this. Oh, but they kind of sound the same. So yeah, that was. They did. They, Kurt, they, they, Kurt, you got me. They, Mike, they, the this little team of theirs, they really got oh, us. Oh, Alan. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Alan was, but maybe the executive. No, producer. he he was. He was in the credits. He's always. We're getting to the point. We've seen so many of these goddamn movies. It's we like <gasps> Paul Dini. It's like Ted and Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez, from from part to Ted and Terry. Jeez. Oh, um, but yeah. Uh, so that was a real singer. I don't know if it's because there was like there's a like it's about Batwoman and then it's revealed that there's three of them. Mm-hmm. I thought there was gonna be Barbara. I thought she was gonna be a bigger part. Oh yeah, what the fuck? She's only in one scene and she's only Barbara. She's at school and she hears about Batwoman and basically there's like this weird she's like, you, sexual you tension. You didn't replace me, me, did you? Because I'd be really upset. But with an older you woman, replaced me with, with an a, older woman, like. Since when the fuck does Barbara talk like that? Like, <laughs> well, Barbara's like supposed to be like a badass, right? She's like Batwoman. She t- like later becomes commissioner. Like, would would she be doing that? Well, I think they're trying to play into this idea of like, like you know. Also, what was the point when you're young? Like, I, I know it's a thing for guys probably, and I'm sure girls have a similar sure. thing where it's like really. when you're a kid, like you have a crush on your babysitter. Like you just do, yeah, right? yeah. Like so, I think it's kind of like that dynamic. Like despite the really weird age gap. And spoiler alert, um, we've talked about. There's a very famous Batman story called The Killing Joke. Yeah. Um, where where Joker shoots Barbara and she's paralyzed. I think we talked about it before. Oh, is that how she becomes commissioner? No, no, no. In this continuity, I don't think that happens. Oh, okay. Because because we see her in Batman Beyond <laughs> walking around as an old lady. No, I'm talking about this one comic but... arc. Um, yeah. No, it just seemed weird because it was like... I haven't finished making my point. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't even said what oh. I was going to say. Say what it... you are going to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the reason why I bring that up is this was interesting to see that, that little like pining mm-hmm. after Ruse because when they adapted The Killing Joke into an animated movie, which we will watch eventually, mm-hmm. the the original, it wasn't like an arc with multiple issues. Like It was literally a one-issue story. 
Oh. So when they adapted it, they were like, this isn't really long enough to be a movie. So, like, let's yeah. add some stuff. So they, from I haven't seen it, but from my understanding, they added this, like, 20 minute, not, I wouldn't say a prologue, but, like, basically 20 minutes of additional material at the start of the movie mm-hmm. before, like, where the comic took uh, started. Uh. And in it, Bruce and Barbara hook up. <gasps> and it was very controversial because people were like, that's v- really weird. Like, they were both adults. What? Hanky, They're both hanky? adults. Oh, my frick. It's, yeah, this is an R rated movie. Also, how? Movie, but, like, or like R rated movie? Mm hmm. Oh, my God. Um, but I'm saying, like, it's, it, it was weird how... to see this in this movie, however, briefly. Yeah. Because I was like, I know that's something we're going to revisit. <laughs> this, like, weird. So maybe, I don't know if the, maybe not the killing joke specifically, but I wonder in the 80 years of Batman history they've ever explored. Mm-hmm. A kind of romantic, at least from Barbara's perspective. Are they allowed to to make a? <laughs> are they allowed to make a, a rated R animated Batman film? It is. Is Warner Brothers allowed to make a movie that no, they I, own the rights? to? No, I know. Mm. It just seems like it just seems like well, it's direct to, not it was direct to video. fair. You know, like it seems like oh, Batman is well, it's appeals based on the... to kids, right? Well, so the Joker like, was R. Well, yeah, but that's like, that's like different. Well, I think it's because the, like the source material is dark. Animated. He shoots this Barbara is... through the stomach. Oh my. You know what I mean? I think it's R. Hold on, um, Batman. But the killing anywho. joke, MPAA rating. What but is it? I just thought... R. Yeah, it was rated R. Oh my frick. Um, I don't know. It just seems like dark. it just seems unfair. Like if I was a kid, like I wouldn't be able to watch it because it's, it's well. From what I heard, it's not very good. So it's not a good adaptation <laughs> of one of the most influential comic book stories. <laughs> on top of adding that part, <laughs> like even if you cut that part out, from what I heard, it's like pretty uninspired and kind of just like a one to one like adaptation. It's like there's nothing really interesting. And, yeah. It, but then you add that piece, and it was just like maligned like, yeah. instantly. And and it brought back and it was done by Bruce Tim, mm. and it featured Kevin Conroy, and Mark Hamill. Like they got it, like it's like oh my god, like Bruce Tim, Kevin Conroy, yeah. Mark Hamill. Yeah. But they get to like do like a really gritty, like true to the comic adaptation. Yeah. And from what I heard, it was kind of like oh. mediocre, right? But we'll get there. Maybe we'll feel differently. I don't well, know. Not every. You know. I ba- right now, Batman Forever is my second favorite Batman movie. So, <laughs> so anything's possible. Um. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of weird because it was kind of like a throwaway scene. So, like, making her character kind of, like, juvenile and needy just seemed strange and out of character from what we've seen so far. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not familiar with, like, the comic book Barbara Gordon, but, I mean, if she's... It's like, if you're going to feature her one time, it kind of feels like character assassination. Like, it's like... Yeah, like, why? Like, what? And, And also... I guess, I don't know. I guess it just like brings up more questions. Like, like, like I was saying, like, is she only Batgirl on winter break? Like, what? Like, I think she kind of alludes to that. She's like, I'll be back. Yeah. Did she say something like that? Yeah, like, I'll she be was back. Like, I'll be Christ- back. Yeah, for like, like Christmas or like Thanksgiving or something. And, and, mm-hmm. um, but then like at that point, why? And then is, are they the same age or is Bruce older? Bruce is meant to be much, much older. Okay, he just, like, just... If she's, like, 20, he has to be at least 30 or 35. Oh, really? I think so. Oh, I just always thought he... I mean, he's he's huge! I, well, I just thought he was just, like, he was, like, that age, but, like, just didn't go to college because you're a billionaire no, I think and running he, a company. He, I, I think the way <laughs> that they portray him and the level of experience that he's meant to have as Bruce... Uh, and yeah. his connection. It, Maybe this he has to be one. at least thirty. At this if one, not older. yeah, seems older. But also, <laughs> why? No, that's the whole thing about like the Robert Pattinson one, where it's like meant to be like a really young, like fresh Batman. Yeah, like he's like very new to this, and he's like yeah, you know. Um, wait. So is this? So is this technically in the same continuity as as the Sub Zero one? Yes. But wasn't she dating Robin in that one? Older Robin, yeah. Dick. Yeah. But now he's gone off to do his own. It's a little fling. Oh, okay, is it? Because remember, Dick uh, Grayson and Tim Drake are two different Robins. Yes, yes, yes. One of them grows up to become well, Nightwing. They never say who it is in this one, I don't think. I think they say Tim. Oh, Tim? Yeah, okay. this is Tim. Oh, okay. 
Um, they skipped Jason Todd altogether. <laughs> poor Jason. In this continuity. Maligned. Well, poor Jason because he died. And then he's like, you know what? You don't even exist. Yeah. In this continuity. <laughs> he should at least exist to die. <laughs> exist to die. Well, if that's his whole thing as a character. Or you know? to die, right? You know, like, um, like uh, what's his well, name? Well, he wasn't created like for Uncle that purpose. Like Uncle Ben, you know? Well, he wasn't created for that purpose. Like Uncle he had ben. been Robin for many years in the comics, and then they did the Death in the Family story arc. Which mm-hmm. is when they killed him off. No, just he saying. Wasn't, whereas Uncle Ben was created to die. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But 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 Jason Todd wasn't like that. <laughs> he just was. Re- he just replaced Dick Grayson when Dick Grayson grew up. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. Like it, it, they could do that and then go to Tim. There's been a lot of Robins. I think in one thing, there's but, Damian uh, Wayne, who was like an illegitimate child of Batman what? from some like fling he had years ago, and like. <laughs> So he's Robin, I believe, at some point, and there's a oh, lot of Robins. Oh, my good, literal child endangerment. Um, like, why do you... I, I, would understand why, I would understand one. Why are all your sidekicks exclusively minors? Where? <laughs> how is this happening? Are you, Where are you finding Are you these? putting out job listings at the local middle schools? Are they coming to you for internships? <laughs> job like, listings at middle schools. Like, I don't understand how this is happening again and again. The first part, okay, the kid loses his family. You're there at the circus, right? You take the kid in, you feel bad, whatever. Mm. Okay. But these other guys, what's up with that? I don't know. But anywho, so he's in it for like two seconds. Very strange. Tim Drake, you mean? Uh, yes. Little he's in it more than... No, he he's in a few scenes. Uh, yes, in a few scenes. As both very, Tim and Rob, Very... But... Un- sequ- like, very inconsequential. And also, he's like a literal boy. He's like reading comic books. So that delineation is... Uh, that gap is made pretty big. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, you, him being older with yeah. what you were saying is kind of... Um, would kind of go in line with this. I like how they like, have matching the Steve one. Jobs outfits when they're in the they do. Like they're both wearing like the black. I guess it's supposed to be like, like the Michael Keaton thing, but like the Michael Keaton thing is also Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs has ruined black turtlenecks and little glasses. I think they've all been Bruce Wayne, <laughs> and Bruce and this, jeans. Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. Yeah. I think they all had at least one scene where they're wearing these like black terminal. Yeah, it's just like a it's just like a basic thing where he's like, like a rich guy thing out of his out of his suit, but also still you know dark and mysterious dark as, and as Bruce is. Because you know? like a turtleneck is like, what are you hiding? Yeah. What are you hiding under that Cause, turtleneck? Because he's an intellectual. Well, yeah. probably yeah, probably a bunch of bruises because um, he's fucking getting beat up at night and then coming home like ain't nothing wrong. But. Um. I will say something about this movie that's kind of contrived is the fact that she's Batwoman, right? So there's literally, there's literally a conversation like <laughs> Batgirl, Batwoman. No, 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 no. I mean, like within the world of the story, like they, oh, they when, when it's revealed that it's the th- all three of them. Yeah. In that they start arguing because they're like Batman's onto us. Like I told you, we should just come up with a new character instead of like riffing off of Batman. Oh yes, yes, yes. But. It, the story or the characters or anything about the movie, not, nothing really explains why they, like, they have an argument, but no one ever says why they, why not just create their own alter ego? Or, except only, I feel like the only reason is so they could have a movie called Mystery of the Batwoman. And they want to figure out, because so, that's like an interesting idea. But they never really I explain mean, it within the world of the story. Why not just create a new alter ego? Why, why does it have to be Batwoman? I mean, I guess so. And why do all three of them have to pretend to be the same person if not just for, like, a narrative non-diegetic twist? Because how why could they... they all? Why couldn't all three of them be, like, part of, like, a, a gang? Like, <laughs> like okay. the... And they could all have, like, their costume, and one's red, and one's blue, and one's green. Well, they're like, the fucking Power Rangers? I, but I'm saying, but why? What no, narrative reason I think No, besides, I think... Uh, well, yes, you're right about the, like, meta situation. But... Um, in terms of shut the fuck up, why are you doing? Uh, but like in terms of the story, I think you know, especially who they're going after. There is the allure from far away. There is the uh, uh, you know uh, reputation from from a distance of Batman, right? So there's that same fear. There's that same you know like. Con- uh, cautiousness, you know, towards them, um, and then it's kind of like it kind of throws them off when they get closer and see that it is a woman. 
Um, I guess so, yeah, but but so again, like, like you just said, like they figure out pretty quickly it's not bad. No, so I know, not, like, but it's this, like, like that fear go away. It's like this is like a, a an imposter. I like, guess I just I guess I just mean like they can easily fly around the city and go to where they need to go without being questioned as much or like a, like it being as much of like a red flag because people know that like Batman is out there so they just see like you know a bat shaped person with a with a cape they're a like bat-shaped oh shaped person so yeah. they're so they're racially profiled or I guess in this case specially he- hero profiling sure and assuming well Batman is dangerous so this bat person must also be dangerous sure but also oh. um what's her buns is a uh, is a fan because he saved her what is her name that is true. Oh, that, that, uh, I think that's a good reason. So, Sonia. Sonia. You Sonia. know what? That is a good... Okay. I, okay, that works. <laughs> that's enough for me. You bite? All right. Well, because you know what? Because the movie, again, is so thin. It's like, if that's the reason, that's a really thin reason. But it fits. It's not, it's not uncharacteristically thin for the movie. So yeah. I'm fine. I figure. Well, and then also, if it was... And then also for movie purposes, if it was a different one, it'd be like a whole thing. And mm-hmm. then like... You know, would you would you market a new villain or would you? It really kind of makes make for a it, good. It really you draws know. you in and hooks you in both by the title and then like the first five minutes because you're like, who who who's this Batwoman? Yeah. So it, it's a good narrative uh, device, if you will. But yeah. I think yeah, I think I think the reason you gave that that's a pretty I think that's a good enough reason. Like basically, it's almost like she's yeah. a fan and she wants to be like Batman. Yeah, I should be. I should be a lawyer coming up with. <laughs> coming well, I mean, it took you. It took you <laughs> rambling for five minutes, and then you were like, "Oh yeah, also this thing." And I, was well, like, I was just coming up with different reasons. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know who's in this movie that I was not expecting? Who? Bane. Is oh this? yes, Bane. Which I don't so know. Random. I wonder. I'm sure he I mean, was I guess in. Not random, but also like small part, so it kind of seems random. He he had been in the animated series by this point, so this is not his first. So Oswald long. called upon his muscles. He did call upon his muscles. Um, and his voice by Hector, the man from the Princess Diaries, and also in Monk. These people are going to think, like, Monk, I gotta watch the show Monk. You oh, talked about it, like... It's great, it's funny. Um, he's um, the therapist in Monk. Um, well, the, yes, the, the, the new the therapist. The new therapist, um, R.I.P. I don't know how I feel about Bane being in this, just because, like, his inclusion is so... Uh, Homo City say random. Like it's it, it doesn't. Why feel... he gotta be Mexican? Why are they always making the Why are they always making the bad guys Mexican? What's up with that? He's meant to be really smart, so. It's, it's well, yeah, card, of course we're smart, but like. <laughs> we're... Are you just complaining about Bane as a character in general, or this? I'm talking about just this movie. It's very random. His inclusion, like I almost I I I don't mean what I'm about to say, but I kind of do oh, in God. that. What are you gonna say? No, just that, if anything, Bane's inclusion in <laughs> Batman and Robin almost felt more relevant because there is, like, this idea, like, Poison Ivy's a scientist and they have the Venom. Whereas oh, yeah, this, they just, like, it's like, it could have been any villain that Penguin calls up, I feel. Yeah, like. It yeah. wouldn't have changed the plot at all. Um, yeah. Like, I, f- I don't feel like this particularly required Bane. Mm-hmm. For his skill set, I don't think it really needed Bane. I'm well, happy I, he's I mean, here. I guess they just they but, couldn't do it with just themselves. So I'm just um, saying it would be interesting to make it, you know, more else. integrated or you know how does it tie thematically? It, it really is just like let's just throw another yeah. villain in for fun. <laughs> what if they teamed up? What if they like employed Batman as their PI and was like. Can you figure out who this is? The villains hire Batman to... <laughs> yeah. So... Because so, because she's plugging not only them, but also Batman, too. So, you know, the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? I see. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? How is Penguin allowed to be... So they have this thing. They go to Penguin's club. Yes. And... His live seals. His live seals are... In the middle and, of but the But as Bruce Wayne... Bruce, Bruce, you know, sees Penguin or whatever, and he's like, oh, I, you know. He mentioned something about some horrible thing Penguin did. Oh, yes. But they don't say how he's not behind bars. Trying to blow up the city. Like, how is he out and about in public is what I'm saying. Yes, he stole plutonium and um, and tried to blow up the city or something. But I'm saying, like, I understand why Penguin's not in jail, but why is he? Because Kevin is. Huh? Because Kevin is. 
that that's the specific thing. I thought it was just. I don't know, but you could say that Kevin mm. was the scapegoat, and so I'm sure he's not the only scapegoat, right? I guess. So if, as long as there is no like you know consequential evidence, no mm. hard evidence, then what can they say? You know. I like my evidence hard. Yeah. Um. Um. How do you feel? So because this is May 2003. Is that are right? you allowed uh, to have seals in the middle of a club? I feel like that that. Are you allowed to have a guy who stole plutonium to blow up the city? I just feel like that, like, contradicts, like, animal cruelty type of thing. It's not like they have a whole enclosure, you know, like at the zoo. I don't know. Like. I don't know. Do they have contracts? They're employed? Are they only part-time? What? (laughs) Are you done? (laughs) Are you done with this bit? Well, it, it started as serious, and then it kind of... <laughs> he realized there wasn't really much to say about it. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, so this is 2003, right? So it's been basically a decade since the original show started. Sure. Um, by this point. More than 11 years by this point. Mm-hmm. So the animation, you know, I, I think it's more dynamic visually. Um, not just in terms of the animation, which can often be a lot more fluid, um, like, there's this one that. shot yeah. when they go to the club that they must have been really proud of. Like, these people dancing, and it's, like, for what we're used to with this animation style is, like, quite fluid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, like, kind of impressive. They But they liked it so much that they showed it again at the end because there's, like, a song that they play at the club, like, that's, like, an originally <laughs> like a written pop song. Video. <laughs> yeah, so the end, the very end of the movie is, like, basically a music video, and they show that little clip of animation again. <laughs> And I'm like, well, then, you know, I, I thought it was a really good piece of animation, too, but I could tell you're really proud of it. Um, but, no, I think, like, it, it does just by nature of, like, not just in terms of the quality of the animation, but also, like, the editing and the action. Like, <laughs> I do find it a bit more dynamic visually, mm-hmm. if perhaps not uh, narratively. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so it's like, I'm sorry, and probably this is sacrilege, but just on a pure, like, <laughs> physiological, like, I'm a human ex- experiencing like visual sensations Mm -hmm. this was more exciting than like a lot of the stuff from the 90s oh really yeah because i don't know i just feel like it's i i don't know i would say except for maybe like the last 20 minutes it doesn't really drag for me like i wasn't really bored all that much i wasn't super engrossed but i wasn't bored either like i thought it moved at a pretty good pace Mm -hmm. um again until like until like that last climactic set piece on the boat Mm -hmm. is like where it really starts to drag like i i I forgot what I was doing, but like I need, I had to do something on my computer, mm-hmm. and like for maybe five or ten minutes. Then when I looked up, like I feel like I was like nothing has really happened. Like I feel like, like I feel like thing, yeah. I feel like we're in the same place that we were when I started to do this thing on my computer. Like, yeah, <laughs> nothing, not not much. It really happened. So yeah. Um. So so I do find it at least more engaging in that sense. Um. Um. But yeah, which I know is probably sacrilege again for. But I think I made my opinions on. <laughs> anime series pretty well <laughs> pretty pretty clear at this point but um. i i guess i know i guess i i can see how he's this version is supposed to be more an, anatomically correct or or similar what? to a, a penguin but i don't like how penguin is drawn i'm sorry i like how he was in the other one in when he's danny devito and he's disgusting no, no. This disgusting little troll man. No, in the other, the, wasn't there an animated video with him? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think, I think this is the first time we've seen the Penguin animated in our, doing the show. I have seen Penguin in episodes of the animated series. And he's drawn a little bit differently because of like, again, the previous art style. But they're pretty similar. So I think you would have the same problems with that older art style. I don't know, I I'm don't not really know. sure what you're saying. I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking of. He's not round enough, I think, is your problem. He's, like, short, but he's not, he's not meatball-y enough. <laughs> Whereas Dave DeVito was, like, a sphere. Like No, he, like, he, he, no, he is a meatball. It, it should be more, like, pear-shaped, but also his nose mm. is very long. And so it's, like, it's, like, so yeah. exaggerated. It's, like, you can tell they're trying to make a beak, but it's, like, mm. he's also just a man. He's yeah. not a weird mutant. Like not not in this was. one, at least, no. Or in any of the other ones. The, the, the Tim Burton ones, that's the only time he's ever portrayed as, like, a weird mutant person. <laughs> he's like, as far as I know. He's like Shark Boy. Well, in the Robert Pattinson one, he's like a Italian mobster. Yes. Which is completely different. He's like Co- Colin Farrell, right? Yeah. Like, completely unrecognizable. Like, yeah. Ridiculous. Um, um, 
this this movie is definitely cartoonier, I will say, than uh, yeah. Like just in terms of like the slapstick, oh like some of the. Oh my god! The I'm sorry, Andrea. I know you you did a good job or whatever, but the some of the a lot of these line readings are really bad. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like. It's just like funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> from from like main characters or just like like random like one line people, like well, background characters. Yeah. Well, Can like, you think of any specific examples? Like when Decay was like, like, where you been? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, where you been? Boy? <laughs> But it's like the intensity like does not match like the tone of the scene. Like she just walks and she's like, "Hello, Dad." He's like, "Where are you been?" He didn't say that. Doesn't but. say anything like that afterwards. <laughs> like... It's like they had him record Kevin Michael Richardson, who's a who's a famous like not famous like, to normal people, but he's like a very prolific voice actor. Um, oh, really? If you look up stuff he's been, he I think he's Gantu in Lilo and Stitch. Like. Oh. He's done a bajillion things from our childhood. Oh, Gantt. Um, I feel like given Michael Richardson was in the studio, <laughs> and they were like, okay, take one. Where are you there? And cut. That's it. <laughs> Moving on. And then the AD is like, um, to the director, um, are you sure you don't want to get another take of that? He's like, no, that was perfect. Let's move on. <laughs> and it, yeah, it just, it just, um, I'm trying to think. I think some of the lines maybe either in the factory or on the boat or something like that. Um, it, it, it just seemed like like they weren't acting together. Like, Something like, we had talked about with the animated series that we would often put <laughs> the actors in the same studio room together to kind of play off each other. Yeah. But you're saying this, ver- this feels like they recorded it like on two random days. Like it doesn't feel... As our, our yeah, project. or even like shared the other one with the other person. So like like shared that shared the other shared one with the, the uh, take of the other person talking with the other actor. Yeah, they're just um, they're just delivering their portion, but they don't really but not reacting. Which yeah, is so important but I, I think they should show you know how they do it. Um, well, actually, they should they should do it at the same time, just in case you know there's a. A, a scene tone acting is type reacting, of situ- situation. Say. You don't want just like that one. Yeah. The first person to do it sets the whole tone for the scene. Um, well, that's a whole like philosophy of acting is like the um, oh I forget the Meisner technique where basically like actors we had to do I had to take like an acting class in school and or directing class but we had to do a lot of acting exercises to like learn what it's like to be an actor. Yes, and that's, and, all, that's well, that's improv. That's what but, I learned. <laughs> but that's like improv. But let's say you have a script, right? Okay, okay. It's not just about the word. Like, ideally, you have well-written material. Mm-hmm. But so much of acting is reacting. And that sounds very much like a cliche, but it's really true. And yeah. I'll give you the... So yeah. the Meisner technique is... Or, like, the exercise is, like, you will... Like, let's say you and I are sitting across from each other. And the acting teacher will be like... <laughs> as we are. As we are. Happen to be right now. <laughs> but they'll say... Say a, a statement, like, a very short statement that you observe about Viviana. So I could say, like, your hair's in a bun. And then you would say in response, my hair's in a bun. And I would say, your hair's in a bun. And we just keep going back and forth. But it's about hearing how the person says oh. it and organically changing the way you say it based off of, like, based off of, like, the subliminal, like, the I tone. like that. Yeah, I like right? that. Right? So, so... The way you apply that to, like, script... Because Yes And is about improv. You're making up the script. No, I know. That's, but, like, the one... But when you apply that, it's very much like... <laughs> yes, the dialogue is the same no matter what. But two really good actors, like, if they're in a play... Yeah. A scene could play out very differently if they're really reacting. So, like, yeah. a character could say, like... Well, you know what? And this is kind of off topic, but I think this makes the point. Remember in Mulholland Drive? Uh-huh. There's the whole, like, little, like, subplot about her auditioning for the movie... So uh, yeah, kind they of do, they do, they show her re- rehearsing the scene with, with her friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're reading it like one, one kind of way. Yeah. But then when she does the audition with like the actual dude, it's a different they do it completely differently. So like, there's a difference between like, you know, if, if, if our, if my line is get out of here mm-hmm. and your line is make me. And if I say, get out of here. Yeah. That, that, that is a particular emotional reaction. Yeah. So then you could respond 
X amount of ways based off of the way I said it. But if, if I say, like, almost under my breath, like, almost already defeated, like, get out of here. Like... You, you as the responding actor, is going to respond in a different way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's like the my point. Tying it all back <laughs> to this, when you have the, the the voice actors in the studio together, they're able to do that. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times with voice performances, what they do to remedy that is mm-hmm. they will just have the voice actor say it like thirty different ways. Yeah. On purpose, like that. That's what they say is like it's really grueling. They'll just like say or like at least have like that. So that way they have the person. options to like. Yeah, have options. Yeah. To then basically do that work that the actors For would do the, together. Yeah. <laughs> the, the editor, like the voice editor, is doing that. Like yeah. what? Re- which of the thirty takes best responds to? This take out yeah. of thirty we chose for this person. Yeah, um, that was kind of a tangent, but I think it. But yeah, I feel like if you had saying. like, oh, what were those like a, what are they called? Uh, script supervisor, like the continuity people. On, on a live action film, they have the script supervisor yeah. making sure that like no lines are being missed, they're saying correctly. A prop is okay. You know, yeah, so like the uh, continuity makes sense in between takes. Yeah, so you would think that like the script supervisor would also kind of like. If they're not doing it at the same time, then kind of, you know, like... I don't know if that, that role exists. Idea. I don't know if that role exists for animated stuff. And if it yeah. does, it, I, I imagine it's very different. Because, again, it's very much... That's true. Yeah. Because when you're doing a take mm-hmm. for a film, obviously all films are done out of order and out of sequence and you're putting it all together. Yeah. But more or less, like, a scene plays out a certain way. And mm-hmm. it's the script supervisor's job to just make sure, like, those factual details are the same. Oh. Whereas, with, again, with this... They have them do it like 30 different ways so that they can then... Yeah. Because what you're describing is like, oh, like, this person will know how Kevin Conroy said it. So then we're recording with Mark Hamill. They could tell him how he just read the line. But then what does Kevin Conroy do it? Because he's the first one to do it. No, I know. That's 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 what I was saying. That's what I was saying. So there's really no way to do that unless you Um, have them in the room together. Or you just have them do like 30 different ways and piece it together. Yeah, so I think they they did the latter. And um, I think... For quite a few of them, you could tell. Um, and I, I think it's just, like, a natural thing. Like, I'm not, like, don't come at me. I know acting can be very difficult. I'm not a great actor, whatever. But, like, I think there's something just, like, natural and innate that you can, like, tell is off. It's like like the Uncanny Valley. Yeah. It's like Even good actors like, can struggle with, in, like, under the tone, wrong environment. You know, yeah. tone and... and um, mm-hmm and uh volume and things like that so uh there there have been times i can't remember if it was in this one or the last one um where they have like kind of like subverted my expectations and like i was expecting it to be read one way because the way that they were doing it and then they read it a different way um but here it's not individual line deliveries it's like conversational um and so it, it does. You don't feel like they're coming together. It does feel very much like someone is just reading a script, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other person is like actually like acting, and then the other person is just like saying stuff because they need to. Because that's that's what the line is. So yeah, to like get the story. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I don't mm-hmm. think it was. I mean, I don't remember. Exactly, but I don't think there was like anyone in particular. I think it just kind of like traded off, just like um, yeah, from different people. But um, it's an inconsistent quality. Yeah. To, to um, sum it up, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah. There was some sexy music though for Batwoman. Whenever she's there, like yeah. they have like this like <laughs> it was so like, weird. Trumpet. It was like very jazzy. She was, or like, whatever. Her, she was like climbing on this like semi truck to like like blow up these like laser things and it's like it kind of reminds me of some of the stuff from the incredibles like, what the fuck? <laughs> like when he's like sneaking around and stuff but um yeah but no they do have this cool music like it's kind of sometimes it's like kind of spooky like i will say the the you have like that opening action set piece and then they have like the title sequence yeah it was like an interesting moody title sequence like it has the spooky music they're kind of like fading in and out of black yeah. to show like Batman flying in the sky and like it's like it was very I was like this is kind of moody like I, yeah. interesting okay it's it's um, but yeah I think those are all my notes overall I mean I think I like this more than I thought I would um, yeah but I think t- it, it's like a very easy watch for me like it's just like yeah 
I, I just found it pretty, like, easy to swallow, I guess. Like... Yeah. I didn't... Uh, yeah, I didn't... Nothing annoyed me Like it, it as like, much as I thought I would. Like, I don't hate it, but it's, like... Like you said, just, like, easy... Well, I just bit my tongue. Um, like, easy to swallow, you know, just kind of, like, washes over you. Like, okay, been there, done that. It's just, like, one of those. Like, it's very... F- it's know. fun. I think it's pretty fun. Like, it's... Again, like, I'm not yeah, bored so. and, like... I don't know. Do you want some trivia? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it up. There's not much. Your, again, because... Your two bullets. My two bullet points. Well, I make up for it with movies like The Dark Knight, and there's, like, pages of trivia. Oh, and God. Like, it's a fact story. But, I mean, it makes sense. That's, like, one of, like, the... Anyway. Get ready! One of the Rumble. characters suspected of being Batwoman is Kathy Duquesne, pronounced Duquesne. The creative team wanted to use the name <laughs> Kathy Kane, which was the secret identity of the original comic book Batwoman. Oh. But DC Comics refused to allow it, since Batwoman acts a bit like a villain in this movie. I guess they didn't want to tarnish the, the Batwoman. But the way that it's... Kathy Kane brand. <laughs> so that's kind of like a oh, yeah, to that's, Kathy Duquesne. That's, that's the thing they would soil, is yeah. the, the, the Kathy Kane brand. Um, but yeah, they make it like very French. It's like D-U-Q-U-E-S-N-E. No, that, that's how you spell Duquesne. Mm. Like Duquesne University. Okay. That's that's like a, that's a, it's a, I believe it's a French pronunciation. No, Yeah. It could be spelled differently. Well, how else would you spell it? D O O K N E. No, no, kind of like Duncan, like like Duquesne, like. I need to find, like, find me, like, find me like Duncan example. with an E. Duncan. No, not like Duncan, like Duncan Donuts, but like like Duncan, the name D O N C A N E, or maybe with a K. So you're saying D U C A N E. Yeah, Duquesne. This is the traditional spell. Or, or even D. As a French woman, I thought you would be a little or more even, excited to see the traditional spell. Or even D U Q A N E. Duquesne. I feel like I've seen it. <sighs> we'll never know. We'll anyway, never know. Very Frenchy. Um, yeah, but just Duquesne. Or Duquesne. Are you done? <laughs> Are you done? This was Bob Hastings' final portrayal of Commissioner James Gordon before his death 11 years later. Ah! I mean, it was 11 years later. It wasn't like... Oh, why did he have to die? <laughs> why do humans have to die? Oh, um, that's sad. In terms of the critical reception, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 60%. Um, on Letterboxd, it has a 3.0. <laughs> I should have just said 3. 3 out of 5. <laughs> 3.0... <laughs> um, here's some letterbox reviews I found. So Bob McQueen, great name, uh, writes, It's all right. Gets a little convoluted with its story. Nice to revisit the best Batman the Animated Series universe. You know, I think... Well, it's I th- the only Batman the Animated Series universe, but I think maybe he means the best ba- animated Batman. You- Good point, Bob McQueen. Well, you know what? I think Bob says it. I think Bob says it best. It's all right. Yeah. William writes, this one is kind of a baby movie, but the animation is glorious. Not a single CGI car in sight. Well, yeah, because it's an it's, it's a animated movie, obviously. Batman is a side character, and that's okay. Um, again, I agree. I like the animation. Yay. It's good. Um, what ebbs? Uh, I have a bullet point here for Legacy, but there is none, so I'm going to skip <laughs> I usually delete it if there's nothing there, but I forgot to delete it. So there is zero legacy for this movie. I think it was forgotten about as quickly. The only thing that I think it deserves credit for is on the DVD, the bon- it had a bonus feature of a short film called Chase Me, which is about Batman and Catwoman, not Batwoman, Even which was which was included, sensual. which was included like as like a post credit thing but it's an interesting little short film because it's silent there's no uh even like sound effects it's just almost like a silent movie there's no dialogue there's no sound effects it's just a instrumental yeah instrumental um um, and that was that was honestly maybe better than this movie but you know (laughs) it was it's not feature like so we're not covering it um okay vivian favorite part scene character actor line anything Mm, probably the just the the voice acting, just like the line reading. Oh, what, what, oh, what did Alfred say? He was like, oh, wait, like something. Oh, as, as they say on the streets, I ain't touching that one or something. Yeah, so, yeah. something like that. <laughs> and then you got Duquesne, and he's like, where you been? <laughs> 
it's just like so random. You don't know how people are gonna say things. And then... That's what I'm saying. But this movie kept me on my toes because I never knew what to expect. And like I... it was very lighthearted, is my point. Like it didn't. It wasn't like super. Like I feel like Mr. Freeze and Sub Zero like was like a little self serious in some ways. Yeah, like, I guess so. Like this was very lighthearted for most of it, even though it like. On, on paper deals with like some more darker things like yeah uh, and, then, and then Penguin he's like what what voiced by uh, Cogsworth <laughs> what? from Beauty and the Beast which um, is so crazy I didn't know that um, I don't think that was the voice of him um, in the series I think it was a different dude I think this is oh, like okay. the one time Cogsworth strange voice. yeah um, yeah for me I think we say how hot the three of them are <laughs> <laughs> but I mean I like their characters they're very Thin, both uh, narratively, thin, but great. also physically thin. Great. No, I thought I, you liked meatballs. What's I up do with like that? meatballs. No, I mean narratively, like, they're not much to them, but no, yeah. there's enough there, and they're interesting, um, and they're hot. And they're also, also, they also all kick ass. Yeah. And they eventually do do it where all of them are all dressed up as Batwoman. So there's yes. multiple at once. And, like, Penguin's like, he gets! There's, they're multiplying! <laughs> he gets! Um, and there was a flop! I don't know what that was for, but I, I saw do that like on the in movies when they when people like grunt or something because they got punched, but the subtitles say "oof." <laughs> oh, Batman Beyond when whenever, whenever Ace the dog barks, it would say "arf arf." <laughs> like it wouldn't say in brackets "bark." It would say "arf" as if like that's his line. Like, or it, like "woof." Or, <laughs> yeah. Arf arf. Oh. Um. Oh, I did like their. I did like their like little flying hoverboard thing. Yeah, it's like a cool did, design. Did, did I, she, I think it's a cool design. Did she make that? Did Roxanne make that? Roxanne! <laughs> Why are we the same person? Okay, whatever. Um, Viviana, one to ten. What are you giving this movie? I'm giving it a six. That's what I figured you were going to give. Okay. It's like, it's not bad, but also like... It's, it's okay. Not, not a fave, you that, know? That's what a six is! So, looking at your other sixes here, what would you? where would you put this? I have no idea. Um, well, let me. Would, would you like this? Would you rather watch this or the serials from the forties? Um, wow, I did, they th- I thought this would be much easier. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess you did really like those serials. Uh, uh, I guess this. One. What do you want to do? Is do you want? Would you rather watch those? That's fine then. Ah! I think that's ridiculous, but I it's feel, up to you. I feel like a bad feminist. Both, both, um, both of them are like one over. Like, would you put it in between? Because you have you have Batman and Robin, the nineteen forty nine serial above the racist nineteen forty three Batman. Would you put this above the racist one or below the racist one? <laughs> Answer very carefully. Wait, which the forty nine one was? The one with the wizard. And then that, the 43 one is the one that's really anti-Japanese. Yeah. So do you like that one more than Mystery of the Batwoman? Uh, yes, you do. No, right? I'm going to put it above that one. You're full of shit. Put it below <laughs> it. Put it. I'm putting it below it for you. Oh, you. This, this is, is your terrible. least favorite. You like it more. You, you like terrible. the racist, the sh- boring-ass four-hour Batman serial. You like that more than this movie. That is preposterous. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna give this a seven. I thought it was good. It was fun. It was short. You know, doesn't take didn't take up too much of my time. Wouldn't mind watching it again, but it's not a favorite. Okay, my, okay. So I, amongst your other sevens, um, I think I like this more than Mister Free Sub Zero. What? Yeah, because that one was a lot of it was filler. A lot of it yeah. was just like I like I said before that just felt like a it really like long, a long episode. Yeah. Whereas this one at least. Feels like its own little story. Yeah. Um, feels like its own. Do I like it more than Batman Beyond Return of the Joker? Like probably, but here's the thing. Again, Return of the Joker yeah. has like more fluff and is a little messier. Mm. Whereas this one is not really. Its ambitions are not nearly as as lofty. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very clean. Like it's very like it's not. Me- it's it's well, very. I, it I it does it's... exactly what it's trying to do, and it does it fairly well so i'm like I yeah don't... well i think if they if they had gone at it like they had beforehand then it it wouldn't be as clean but i think 
because I actually like this one more than I'm surprised. There I, I is surprised so it. much. That's why it is thin because like it's not that long. So like they don't have the time to be like divulging into like each background, like the background of each lady, um, and kind of like piecing it together, you know, um, mm-hmm. more cohesively. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be to very you, controversial. Man. Up to you, man. I'm gonna be very controversial. I I kind of liked this movie. Okay. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put it above Return of the Joker, which is uh, preposterous. What? Even though Return of the Joker has like one of the best sequences in a Batman movie like ever. <laughs> um, do I like this more than the Adam West one? Okay, take their boobs out of it. How, how do you, what do you, uh, how do you like this film? What do you like, uh, you know? Um, this didn't really speak to me, I don't know, but you seem to like it a lot, so. I thought it was fun, you know what, I, uh, maybe I won't put it below Return of the Joker. No, 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 you do whatever the hell you no, want, but I'm just I, saying, like, besides their hotness, what compelled you to the, you know, what, what do you like about it? I just thought it was very solid. Okay. I'm gonna put you know what I'm gonna put this below Return of the Joker because I think that 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 flashback sequence does a lot for that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know it is messier. But I think even the stuff that isn't in the flashback is still pretty solid. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I don't. No, no, I'm putting it above Return of the Joker because <laughs> I didn't mean to change the answer. I was just because was just I'm gonna put it below Adam West because this is a very clean. <laughs> It's very focused, um, you know, it's very, I think it's pretty good. Unfairly maligned. <laughs> but I, yeah, I know that's probably sacrilegious, but, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking to I it. I mean, mine's on the bottom, so. I think that's preposterous. That is, I've all the, I, I, you like it less than Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's preposterous. <laughs> yeah, because that's hilarious. That's preposterous. <laughs> but that's it for this week's episode. Oh my god! <laughs> of now that's what I call a franchise. Talk about preposterous films. Next week, <laughs> we'll be watching the next film in the franchise, the 2004 film Catwoman. Meow. Viv- me. Yeah. Halle Berry. Viviana, where can they find me? Where can they find me out about us? Uh, more me out <laughs> about. Where can they find us, quick? <laughs> you guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts, of course. Don't forget to follow us on the socials Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, I'm going off script at Franchise Podcast. You better adhere to the script. <laughs> <laughs> We know you have many podcasts. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Later, gators.